So as we have created Hive table, which is nothing but uh, processed data in HDFS directory after going through the typical data processing lifecycle and the involvement of the scope. Uh, let us actually run a simple export uh, with the delimiters and uh, then we'll understand export behavior and, uh, and the, uh, <clears throat> the impact of number of mappers or how the number of mappers are, are determined, so on and so forth. That being said, um, before actually um, performing the export, we need to create the table. And if you recollect, we have actually ran this query and uh, copy the processed data to a Hive table called daily revenue. Hive table is nothing but a HDFS directory. So here, whether you are doing from Hive table or regular HDFS directory, uh, we just have to uh, consider it as a HDFS directory. You cannot say that, okay, export from Hive table, the way you have done for Hive import. So when it comes to import, you have typical HDFS import. You Also, you have Hive import, in which case it will create it will have some control arguments uh, related to managing Hive tables. That is not the case with export. Export always expects a HDFS directory and Hive table is nothing but a uh, uh, directory in a HDFS. Hence, we can uh, specify the it, and, and directory pointed by this Hive table. Okay, <clears throat> so that being said, uh, when it comes to target table, in this case, it's a table in a traditional relational database such as MySQL, Postgres, etc. Uh, we need to have a table before exporting the data. Unlike import where the directories or tables uh, can be created um, while performing the import with respect to export, uh, it cannot actually create a table in the remote database. For that reason, we have to pre-create the table. For uh, that being said, I am already connected to the lab now I am getting into the MySQL database. Here it's retail underscore user is the username. Uh, and then show databases. So far for import, we have used retail underscore DB using user retail underscore user. For export, we'll be using retail underscore export. Okay. And uh, you, if you want to create tables for exporting the data, don't do it into retail underscore DB. Uh, no one have uh, right permissions into that, which means retail underscore user doesn't have right permissions into retail underscore DB. So you, you cannot actually create tables and import data into those tables. For that reason, you have to use retail underscore export. Now you can say create table. You can give any table name. And uh, typically, uh, the column name, uh, the number of columns and data types should match. The names need not match, but the number of columns and data types should match. In our case, we have order date, which is nothing but a string in a Hive table. Hence, we can actually say varchar in MySQL. Here for date, I am giving 30. If the date is a valid MySQL date, you can also specify it as date. There's no problem with that. Uh, but if the date is not valid uh, MySQL date format, then you have to store it as uh, varchar like this. And then revenue. In Hive, we named it as daily revenue. In MySQL, I'm naming it as revenue. And then it is of type float. Okay, so now the table is created. Exit from here, go to Hive. Use the Diga Diraju underscore scoop. Import, this is the database in which we have created the table earlier, even though database is misleading, that's fine. And uh, say show tables. This is the table which we are interested to export. So first to describe, the table name to get the field names, order date and daily revenue. And our data types are matching. On top of it, you also run describe formatted daily revenue, which will give us many other details, such as the, uh, the HDFS directory for this Hive table. 
So this is the HDFS directory for this Hive table. And then uh, um, uh, we need to understand the delimiters also. Uh, we will get back to that in a moment. Um, let me paste this path here. Okay. Now let us write scoop export command. Scoop export. And then export also we are trying to connect to a remote database. But in this case to write. Earlier for import to read. Here we are trying to write. So I am saying connect. JDBC MySQL ms.itvarsity.com3306 is the port number and retail underscore export is the database name, not retail underscore db. Because the user which we are trying to use doesn't have write permission on retail underscore db. So retail underscore user is the username and password is still itvarsity. And then uh, for uh, exporting data, instead of saying target directory or warehouse directory in import, uh, we have to say export directory. And we have to give uh, the lowest level directory in which we have files so that data can be exported. So this is the path from where we want to export. Okay. And on top of it, if you recollect, uh, when it comes to scoop import, we have seen the field delimiters and all those things. And uh, uh, we have seen that uh, the fields, uh, uh, the default delimiters are comma for field and new line character for line, um, backward slash for uh, 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 escape character and so on and so forth. But when we actually run create table command, we have already seen that it has actually used uh, a control A character as a field delimiter. It is not a typical comma. It is not simple comma, which is a field delimiter. It is control A character. For line, it's a new line character, but for uh, field delimiter, it is a control A character. So if you want to override uh, the defaults, if, if I run scoop export directly like this, it will fail because scoop thinks uh, scoop try to pass uh, with comma as um, uh, default delimiter but in our case it's control a okay control a is nothing but ascii one and we have to pass that value and the way you can pass for export is by using input fields terminated by for import it's a field terminated by for export, it's input fields terminated by or input lines terminated by. So here I can say input fields terminated by. Okay. And we are talking about uh, Yeah, so the ASCII character can be passed as like this for control a this is the value if it is tab you just have to say slash t if it is uh, 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 some other character like pipe you have to say pipe so you need to understand the special characters such as tab and uh, uh, ascii characters as well as sim simple characters such as comma etc in this case we have to pass this special character now i can run this scoop export Okay, so one more missing uh, argument is the table name. We have specified export directory to which data has to be read, but we haven't specified the table name to which data has to be written. And this table is MySQL table. In this case, table name is daily revenue. So unlike uh, scoop import, um, it will not try to create uh, a uh, table with the directory name in the MySQL, that is not possible. That's why table is mandatory. Table as well as export directory uh, are mandatory.
now it is running we will see if uh, that control a can be considered as uh, slash 001 if it uh, if we pass incorrectly it will fail the daily revenue will fail i means the export of daily revenue will fail So even for the export, if you see, it is creating that uh, code um, to uh, to match the table structure to which we are trying to export the data. That is what have happened in the beginning. It ran a query against uh, um, MySQL table to get the table structure and it has created the .java file. And then it used that .java file to compile into a .jar file, which will be injected to, into the scoop uh, scoop binaries to export the data and uh, then you can see number of splits are still four uh, the way uh, we, we it was done with the scoop import um, and uh, then it actually uh, read the data from hdfs location and write it into um, uh, write it into mysql table we have actually ran the query and the create table command uh, to only process uh, uh, to only process uh, the 2013 July data where there are only seven days uh, data in that. Hence, it has exported seven records. And if you want to uh, uh, review, you can connect to MySQL here. Retail export, select. Start from daily revenue, and you can see the data. This is how you can actually perform the scoop export. Okay, so now we will understand how the number of mappers are determined uh, and uh, uh, other important uh, information, how the export is actually uh, done, and all those things uh, as we proceed further. Uh, as of now, we only covered simple export and the delimiters. And if you look at the documentation, export is relatively very small topic to understand compared to import. So we only have to understand these uh, control arguments. Again, in this, we have already seen export directory. We have seen table. Um, and uh, as we have seen uh, for import uh, to deal with null, null values, you can see for export as well. The counterparts for the imports null string and null non string are input null string and input null non string. And also, we have already covered the uh, dealing with the delimiters and uh, enclosing, uh, enclosing characters. And there are a few more things which you need to understand. We will see that also. It will not take as much time as we have uh, taken for import to understand export. Export is a relatively very, very small topic.